And Richard Dakin's not here, not that I've seen. We yet. are, but running, we are running quite early. Um, Andrew Seeger, are you comfortable going early? Well, we can we can always take a break and come back to you, but uh, you're happy to go. Thank you, sir. That'd be much appreciated if that's okay. <laughs> five for ten. Number 81, everyone. You have 10 minutes, Mr. Seeger, and we've got, um, at eight minutes, I'll do something like this to let you know that you've got two minutes left, and if you wish us to ask you questions, please allow some time in your 10 minutes. So I can go right through and you will ask questions at the end, yeah. if there's any questions. If there's any time left. If there's any time. Yeah. Right. I prefer to stand, actually. I just feel more comfortable standing, That's if that's possible. Absolutely. So I just lift that, oh, it doesn't go up. Can you, can you hear me? Yes, thank right, you. OK. OK, well, thank you for uh, giving me the opportunity to um, present um, a picture of what I think the dam, or not the dam, could um, create for Central Hawke's Bay. Um, my name is Andrew Seeger. I'm a small commercial vegetable grower that lives right on the border of Central Hawke's Bay <coughs> and the Hastings District. I've been there for 20 years. Um, I know farmers, I know growers in the area, I know quite a lot of the local community in Otani, White Power, those sort of small settlements. I must stress that I'm not for or against the dam, per se. Um, I'd like to present a, um, a picture of um, um, a community of the future. Um, which can create real jobs, really. I'm talking about Central Hawke's Bay here now, seeing that the dam will be in Central Hawke's Bay. Um, I'm interested in sustainable agriculture, agriculture that is not monocultural, agriculture that is long-term. And I'm talking 50, 100 years into the future. And I'm interested in a clean environment. Um, I'm very speaking as an individual and of people who... I've met over the last two years and I have discussed this with. So I'm, I don't have any party political interests and I don't have any financial corporate interests either. I'm purely a small grower that uh, works hard for a living physically. Okay. Um, I think that, that the, in, the, um, the idea of increasing the flow of the Tuki Tuk River, and I understand this to be um, an original idea of the dam, <coughs> to increase those low those summer low levels flow, the, the low flow of the Tuki Tuk has always been an issue. And when I first came to live here 24 years ago, people used to talk about the dying river. So it's not an issue that's come recently. Um, I've smelt the uh, entropic, what they call the entropification of, of the river, you know, that, that sulfur smell, that decaying anaerobic smell that you can smell in any summer on the Tuki Tuk. I used to take my daughter there regularly swimming, you know, 15, 20 years ago. So I think if, the, if the, in, the increase in the river could change that, you know, the outflow from this dam, if that would happen, that could possibly um, uh, improve the state of the Tuki Tuk River. But then, of course, there's further implications down the track as to what that does to the environment, the microclimates, you know, is all that, what is all going to end up in the sea anyway. Um, so that's one point. Um, 
um, dry land farmers and growers. I mean, the idea of this dam is to create irrigation for dry land um, Ruatanifi plains, presumably. Um, I don't know how much irrigation is out there already. There is some, because there is some dairy farming there at the moment, and there are orchards already there, I know that. Um, I think, um, you know, farmers should farm to the capacity of the land. There's only, there's only so much you can do to improve growth. I mean, we all need water. We all know that a plant will die if it doesn't get gets water. So without water, you can't have agriculture. I understand that. But there is a... There is a way of um, farming, and some farmers are doing this. I'm not knocking farmers one, one bit, because there's some very good farmers out there, that you build your water in the soil. You store your water in the soil by you increasing the organic matter of the soil. And you can do that through green manuring. You can do it through um, um, crop rotation. You can do it through macro and micro uh, nutrients. I'm not necessarily talking about MPK fertilizers here. I'm talking about um, rock dusts. I'm talking about um, seaweed. I'm talking about liquid fertilizers, that sort of thing. Um, I think there's too much talk of the economic benefits. You know, economics is like the weather. You don't really know what's going to happen down the track. You can only guess. There's probably 50% chance you get it right. So... And I'm not against economic development. I'm very much for it. We need extra jobs. We need diverse businesses in Hawke's Bay. You know, you could have a bakery there. You know, if they decide to grow more wheat with irrigation water, you could have a bakery. A mill. You know, the, those sort of things. We want small regional businesses. We don't want all our bread coming from Auckland, you know, or Christchurch or Wellington. You know, we want people to develop in regions... And what seems to be happening over the years in Central Hawke's Bay is you've got, a, you've got almost an underclass of people there who have lived there most of their lives who are doing seasonal work and they're on the dole for the other six months of the year. I don't see that as a future for Central Hawke's Bay. Um, you know, a lot of the people who are doing things, and, are, and there are locals who are doing things, are coming in with outside money. And that's the idea, how do we create that capital within the bay? Um, I think Federated Farmers should accept the decision of the Board of Inquiry into the, 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 uh, the nitrogen levels, the 0.8 milligrams per litre of nitrogen which is leached off the land. I think they should accept that and I should think that they should farm to those standards because we spent 11 million bucks on this um, Board of Inquiry. I think we should respect the decision. And you can't keep shifting the goalpost all the time. Um, Dr. Jim Salinger, who some of you might know, a climate scientist, has suggested that growing grass is actually an expensive way of using water. So he suggested growing wheat or raisins, you know, something like that. And there could be lots of other crops. There could be garlic. Garlic is a potential. You know, why do we import all this stuff from China when we could be growing it all here in New Zealand, you know? I'm not against international trade. I'm just saying, you know, with the water you could do a lot of other stuff, you know, and you could produce a lot of jobs. You, know, you, you could grow intensively on small areas and create six or seven jobs, you know, because it's intensive, it's adding value to a product, and garlic is one crop that you can do that with very much. Um, yeah, um, how long have I got? Three minutes. Three minutes. Wow, okay. You know, could, um, could not the council change the bylaws, the regional council change its bylaws and, uh, and, and look at the RMA uh, with their regulations and uh, so farmers can construct their own small dams? You know, a million cubic litre capacity, you know, something like that. Four farmers getting together, sharing the costs, sharing the water. Yeah, that's another option. I've read reports that he can't, that the actual geology of these areas which were looked at, I think that was Andy Pierce was talking about <coughs> that, have been looked into and they weren't geologically sound to actually build a dam there. Well, there must be dozens, hundreds of locations around the Rohines where you could do that on a small scale. 
Um, monocultures are unfortunately a world trend. Uh, the argument is that we have to feed 7 billion people. So get real, will you, you small growers? You know, that's an argument. But I think it's born of uh, hair-brained economic thinking. Two minutes? OK. Um, I, I'm interested in land diversification. I'm interested in biological farming here. I'm interested, and it's happening already. I'm interested in looking at new ways to do things for the world market that wants clean food and, is, um, and they're prepared to pay for it because we'll always be an export uh, nation as far as food goes. Um, I don't think the ratepayers of Hawke's Bay should pay for this dam. Uh, I think they've got enough cost as it is. Um, I'm interested in new communities being created and old ones being revitalised. And the final point is perhaps um, this is too big, too big a decision for you councillors to make. Maybe we need a referendum. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Right. Questions from the air? The more things change, the more they stay the same. <coughs> Could I ask you one question? That's right regarding the, uh, the, the, <coughs> the conditions under which this council should make its uh, decision. Do you believe that the <coughs> council should, uh, uh, should apply the highest standards of fiduciary responsibility when making the decision whether or not to invest $80 million in the Rotanifal Water Storage Scheme? that in doing so should have access to the complete, updated uh, business case with all the latest details in it, and should be able to see for themselves that the conditions precedent identified are met. For example, uh, can be assured themselves that the 40 million <coughs> cubic metres, which is a contract minimum, is guaranteed, is not uh, conditional, and for both supply and for taking. So the question is, do I think that you should have sole rights to those, that information? You know, whether we should have access to all that information and make sure that we know it for ourselves before making a decision? Of course. Thank you. Uh, of course. I mean, I, I don't know the details. Right. Every, it should be open, shouldn't it? Sure. This is for the benefit of New Zealand, it seems, not just Hawke's Bay. Hmm. Or so it's banded. I don't know who's pushing this. I don't really know who's pushing it. Yeah. Right. Good. Thank, thank you, Mr. Seeger. Thank you very and much. And thank you very much for a very clear explanation of your um, uh, your your handout material. Thank you very much.